Reporting from Arkham Asylum, this is Gotham Rogues. In this video we count down the 5 best villains in the Batman Arkham games. So a while back I did a video where I ranked the 5 most neglected villains in the Batman Arkham games. But now in this video we're going to talk about something more positive. I will not be including the Joker however, because that would be just too obvious. Of course he's the best villain in these games, the entire game series is about him. So let's shine the spotlight on some of the other rogues for once. Of course this list is just my opinion, so feel free to write your own in the comments. Number 5. The Penguin Penguin is easily one of the most memorable villains in the Arkham games. I just love the depiction of him. Like in all modern comics, he's portrayed as a mob boss type of character. But unlike the source material, where he's a sophisticated, well-spoken gentleman of crime, here he's a crude, violent little bastard who speaks in a cockney accent. Like many others have commented, it's like a Guy Ritchie version of the Penguin. I'd never call it definitive Penguin, but it's a really cool alternate take on him. He's very entertaining entertaining to watch, and voice actor Nolan North does a great job in bringing this nasty guy to life. I appreciate that we got so much of Penguin in these games. Sure, he was never the main villain, but he had a very large presence in Arkham City especially, as well as a fairly big role in Origins. Of course, it's in City he shines the most, as you spend a lot of time in his territory. In that game, he's arguably the prison's biggest gang leader, and is holed up in Gotham's museum. There he's keeping all of his defeated enemies and other interesting things captured and displayed. I think that's just so typical Penguin, a collector who's always got a showboat. He's certainly not short of ambitions either, as Cobblepot's got several empty display cases reserved for future spoils, such as the Joker and Bruce Wayne. Number 4. Mr. Freeze the Arkham games Freeze feels like he's straight out of the animated series, which is maybe not so strange as Arkham City was written by Paul Dini. It's in City where Freeze is mainly featured, all of his other appearances were in DLCs, which I honestly never got so I don't know what he's like in those. But City gave us a perfect Freeze who's not really a villain, he's one of the Penguin's many trophies, and you as Batman are supposed to rescue him. He then helps the player create a cure for the virus that Joker infected Batman with, but only if you you save his frozen wife Nora from the Joker first. It's a pretty perfect freeze plot and I commend the game developers for managing to portray Victor as a tragic and sympathetic character. That's hard to do when your main job is to create challenging opponents for the player. Although I have to admit the boss battle with Freeze does feel a bit forced, but obviously you had to actually fight him at least once because it is a video game after all. It's also one of the best boss battles in the entire series so… But yeah, the characterization of Mr. Freeze in Arkham City is what I would call definitive and an absolute perfect adaptation. Maurice Lemarch, the guy who voiced the character, also do a spot on performance that's very reminiscent of Michael Ansara's freeze from the animated series. Number 3. The Scarecrow to me, the most memorable thing about Arkham Asylum is the Scarecrow. He completely steals that game in my opinion. I think it's pretty safe to say that we've never seen a creepier and more inhuman crane before. He's like a horror movie boogeyman and that's how I like him. I've said this several times before, but Scarecrow is supposed to be scary. I don't like it when he's portrayed in a goofy fashion. That defeats the purpose of the character in my opinion. I also really dig the fact that during the Joker's takeover of the Asylum, Crane's just kinda doing his own thing, pumping Batman full of fear toxin and then attempting to infect Gotham's water supply with it. He doesn't care about Joker's plans, he's got his own and there's also no way that Joker could've controlled him anyway. Then in Arkham Knight, Scarecrow is made to be the main villain even. I gotta hand it to the Arkham games, they sure handle Crane with the respect that he deserves. I would've put him even higher on this list if Knight had explored his motivations a bit more. Also I think it's a shame that they changed the voice actor from Dino Andrade to John Noble in Night. Nothing against Noble, but his work does sound a bit like a generic Vincent Price, while Andrade's voice performance just sends chills down my spine. He's got such a soft, strange sounding voice that it makes the character all the more freaky. Number 2. Poison Ivy 
The Arkham games feature pretty much a perfect depiction of Ivy in my opinion. She's clearly portrayed as more plants than human, as Ivy doesn't really seem to care about people at all. Nothing concerns her except for plant life, or as she calls them, her babies. Just like Scarecrow, Ivy does her own thing in Asylum, and never bothers to get herself involved in the Joker scheme. Later, she even kind of takes over the Asylum with her giant plant growths, and threatens to actually come after the Joker. I never like it when another rogue is made to be sub subordinate to the Joker, so she gets major plus points for that. Then with Arkham Knight, I was even more impressed with Ivy, as they portrayed her as a sympathetic character who allies herself with Batman against Crane. In the end, and this is a major spoiler now, Ivy actually sacrifices herself in order to save Gotham from Scarecrow's fair toxin. That shocked me a bit, and what a worthy way for the character to go. Of course, she doesn't do it for the people of Gotham, but for the plant life. So while her actions are very noble, Ivy's motive motivations behind them are kind of crazy. But that's Ivy, and totally in character. Voice actress Tasia Valenza also do a great job, managing to sound both seductive and creepy at the same time. And now for the greatest rogue in the Batman Arkham games, besides the Joker. Number 1. The Riddler if you've watched my top 5 most neglected Arkham villains video, then you might be a bit confused now, as I also included Riddler on that list. But I never said Riddler was depicted badly, I just didn't like that not once was he part of the main story. As for the portrayal of the character, I think it's actually flawless. He's a smug, arrogant bastard who thinks he's smarter than everyone else. I love how Nigma constantly insults Batman's intelligence, and then starts to get frantic when you're getting closer and closer to solving all his riddles and puzzles. Riddler hates that he's being proven wrong, that he's not the smartest man in Gotham. Voice actor Wally Wingert captures Nygma's personality perfectly, and his work is very reminiscent of John Glover's performance as a character in the animated series. I'd actually say that Wingert even steps it up a notch. Gameplay-wise, I also think they implemented the Riddler fantastically. Puzzles, the riddles, the challenges, they're just so Riddler, and it makes you realize just how made for video games he is. Sure, some of the challenges could get kind of tedious, and I only completed all of them in Asylum and City, but for the most part they were very well done. So there you have it, those are the 5 best villains in the Batman Arkham games. Remember, Arkham Asylum awaits you in the next video.